already said, the Yogi of the heart has a heavenly dome above and earthly abyss below and his yoga becomes twofold as a consequence. He joins himself onto the thing above in Diana and the thing below in Athens. The word Yagna derived from the word Yaj to serve also means a twofold service, service done. To the thing above free service done unto its expression the thing below. Some thoughts on the Gita, PP. 18, 134. 
cosmic liquid, physical flame, earth, cosmic dance, T H E T H E R I C B O D Y A N D P R A N A 83. When the Logos has expanded his consciousness on cosmic levels, he can then transcend the Logo of the Veric Web and escape beyond the ring mass knot of his objective manifestation. In thinking out this analogy, we must hold closely in mind the fact that the seven major planes of our solar system are the seven subplanes of the cosmic physical or the lowest cosmic plane. is equally accurate. 6. In all the three bodies human, planetary, and systemic or logoic will be found a great organ within the organism which acts as the receiver of prana. This organ has its etheric manifestation and its dense physical correspondence. In the system, in the system, the organ of cosmic prana, of the force vitalizing matter, is the central sun, which is the direct receiver and dispenser of cosmic radiation. This is one of the threefold divisions of the primordial ray of active intelligence. Each of the cosmic rays is in essence threefold, a fact which is oft overlooked, though logically obvious. The vehicle for a cosmic entity, and all existence is necessarily triple in manifestation. The central sun has within its periphery a center of reception with a surface radiation. In the planet, in the planet there will be found a similar organ or receiver within its apparent body, the locality of which is not for exoteric publication and cannot therefore be revealed. It is connected with the location of the two poles, north and south, and is the center around which the globe rotates, and is the source of the legend of the sacred fertile land within the sphere of polar influences. The mythic land of exceeding fertility, of abundance. 84. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E -E on cosmic fire. Esoteric Garden of Eden, the land of physical perfection. Surface radiation demonstrates, after distribution, as planetary prana. In man, the organ of reception is the spleen through its apparent counterpart. After distribution over the entire body via the etheric network, it demonstrates in surface radiation as the health aura. Seven. Thus in all the three bodies will the resemblance clearly be seen, and the working out in perfect correspondence is easily demonstrable. G-P-L-A-N-E-T Entity Manifesting The Solar Logos The Solar System Pole of the Central Sun Solar Prana Systemic Rotation Solar Etheric Radiation Cosmically A Planetary Logos Body of Manifestation Receptive Center Surface Radiation or Emanation Movement produced. Distributive effect. A-H-U-M-A-N-E-I-N-G. Entity manifesting. Body of manifestation. Receptive center. Surface radiation or emanation. Movement produced. Distributive effect. A planet. The planetary pole. Planetary prana. 
Planetary rotation. Planetary etheric radiation felt within the system. The thinker, a dying charmon. Physical body. The spleen. Health aura. Atomic rotation. Felt. Human etheric radiation felt by environment. radiation or emanation, movement produced, distributive effect, an elementary life, the atomic sphere, pole of the atom, contribution of atoms to the united health of the body, atomic rotation, atomic etheric radiation felt within the physical form. Eighth, when the will to live, vanishes, then the sons of necessity cease from objective manifestation. This is logically inevitable, and its working out can be seen in every case often typed objectivity. When the thinker on his own plane withdraws his attention from his little system within the three worlds and gathers within himself all his forces, then physical plane existence comes to an end and all returns within the causal consciousness. This is as much an abstraction in the three worlds of the thinker as the absolute is in the threefold solar system of the logos. This demonstrates on the physical plane in the withdrawing from out of the top of the head of the radiant etheric body and the consequent integration of the physical. The framework goes and the dense physical form falls apart. The pranic life is abstracted bodily from out of the dense sheet, and the stimulation of the fires of matter ceases to be. The latent fire of the atom remains. It is inherent, but the form is made by the action of the two fires of matter active and latent, radiatory and inherent aided by the fire of the second logos, and when they are separated the form falls apart. This is a picture in miniature of the essential duality of all things acted upon by Bohat. 86 ATREATISEONCOSMICFIRE There is a close connection between the screen and the top of the head in connection with the etheric body. The organ of the spleen has an interesting correspondence to the umbilical cord which attaches an infant to the mother for purposes of nourishment and which is separated at birth. When a man starts to live his own life of conscious desire, when a man is born into a new world of a subtler form of life, that interlaced cord of etheric matter which had united him to his physical body is broken, the silver cord is loosed, and the man severs his connection with the dense physical body and passes out through the highest center of the body instead of the lowest to life in a higher world and of another dimension. So it will be found in all the bodies and sheaths of the microcosm, for the analogy will persist on all planes during manifestation. When more scientific knowledge has been gained it will be found that the same procedure on a larger scale, takes place in planetary manifestation. A planet is but the body of a planetary logos, that body being a parent, and the logos expressing himself through it, and building upon the etheric scaffolding a vehicle of manifestation. The moon once was the body of expression for one of the logo, the earth now is, and the cycles change continuously. The center of escape for the etheric body is found likewise in a physical planet, and the planetary silver cord is used at the time. Appointed, in the times and cycles, their commencement and termination are hidden the mysteries of initiation, and do not concern us. Again in the solar system itself similar action will eventuate at the close.
close of Amon and Bantera. The Logos will withdraw within himself, abstracting his three major principles. Point three seven, his body of manifestation, the Sun. Thirty seven principles, the basic differentiations, essential qualities are types of energy upon which all things are built. The distinctive nature of all forms. T H E T H E R I C E O V Y A N T P R A N A 87. And the seven sacred planets, all existing in etheric matter, will withdraw from objectivity and become obscured. From the usual physical standpoint, the light of the system will go out. This will be succeeded by a gradual inbreathing until he shall have gathered all unto himself. The etheric will cease to exist, and the web will be known. More, full consciousness will be achieved, and in the moment of achievement existence or entified manifestation will cease. All will be reabsorbed within the Absolute, Kerala, 38 or the Cosmic Heaven of Rest will then ensue, and the voice of the silence will be heard now. More, the reverberations of the word will die away, and the silence of the high places will reign supreme. 2. The Nature of Prana In dealing with the subject of the etheric body and its functions as an assimilator and distributor of prana, dealt with it from the standpoint of its place in the scheme of things. We have considered this matter of etherics from the angle of correspondences, and have traced analogies in the system, the planet, and man. We have seen that it formed the foundation of the dense physical form, and in itself constituted a most important link between A. B. Physical man, and the emotional or astral plane. Planetary man, and essential emotional quality. The logos, the grand heavenly man, and the cosmic astral plane. When I now narrow the subject down to the consideration of the etheric body of the human being and not touch upon correspondences to things systemic or cosmic at all, well, it may be necessary to remind ourselves that for the wise student of mine along which was 38 Pralaya, a period of obscuration or repose planetary, systemic and cosmic, and an interlude between two periods of manifestation. 88 A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E the interpretive one, he who knows himself, in objective manifestation, essential quality, and comprehensive development, knows likewise the Lord of his ray, and the logos of his system. It is only then a matter of application, conscious expansion, and intelligent interpretation, coupled to a wise extension from dogmatic assertion, and a recognition that the correspondence lies in quality and method more than in detailed adherence to a specified action at any given time in evolution. All that it is possible to give here is material which, if rightly pondered on, may result in more intelligent practical living in the occult sense of the term, living, which, if studied scientifically, religiously and philosophically, may lead to the furthering of the aims of the evolutionary process in the immediately coming lesser cycle. Our aim, therefore, is to make the secondary body of man more real, and to show some of its functions and how it can eventually be brought consciously into the range of mental comprehension. Science, as we know, is fast reaching the point where it will be forced to admit the fact of the etheric body, because the difficulties of refusing to acknowledge it.
vitality, blinding is yet the question of vitality, the effect of solar rays upon the physical organism, and the underlying laws of inherent and radiator and heat. They are beginning to ascribe to this clean conscience. Hitherto not recognized, to study the effect of the action of the glands, and their relation to the assimilation of the vital essences by the bodily brain.
there be the life upon it? Does solar prana have no effect there? What constitutes the difference between the apparently dead moon and a live planet, such as the Earth? 40. Here we touch upon a hidden mystery, of which the solution lies revealed for those who see in the fact that human beings and certain groups of devas are no longer found upon the moon. Man has not ceased to exist upon the moon because it is dead and cannot therefore support his life, but the moon is dead because man and these diva groups have been removed from off its surface and from its sphere of influence. Point four L man and the devil act on every planet as intermediaries or as transmitting agencies. Where they are not found, then certain great activities become impossible, and disintegration sets in. The reason for this removal lies in the cosmic law of cause and effect, our cosmic karma, and in the composite, yet individual, history of that one of the heavenly men whose body, the moon or any other dead planet at any time happened to be. 3. The Prana of Forms it must first be pointed out that forms are necessarily of two kinds, each having a different place in the scheme. Forms that are the result of the work of the third and the second logos, and their united life. Such forms are the units in the vegetable, animal and mineral kingdoms. Forms that are the result of the united action of the three logoi, and comprise the strictly diva and human forms. There is also the still simple form embodied in the substance of which all the other forms are made. This man, 40s, d, i, 170-180, to 41s, d, i, 179. Chart 2 is on page 94. T H E E T H E R I C B O D Y A N E P R A N A 95. Tear is strictly speaking the atomic and molecular matter, and is animated by the life or energy of the third logos. In dealing with the first group of forms, it must be noted that the pranic emanations given off by units of the animal and vegetable kingdom after they have absorbed both solar and planetary prana are naturally a combination of the two, and are transmitted by means of surface radiation, as in solar and planetary prana, to certain lesser groups of devas of a not very high order, radiating animal or vegetable. This matter cannot be dealt with here. These devas are also of a violet hue, but of such a pale color as to be almost gray. They are in a transitional state, and merge with a puzzling confusion with groups of entities that are almost on the involutionary arc point 42443A. 42 involutionary arc is the term applied to the first part of the evolutionary process. It covers the path of descent, or the coming down of spirit into ever denser matter until the lowest point is reached, the point of densest concretion. The latter half of the process is called evolutionary and marks the ascent or return of spirit to its emanating source, plus the gains of the evolutionary process. 43 inches the three zero root pourings. In the diagram the symbols of the three aspects of the logos are placed outside of time and space, and only the streams of influence from them descend into our system of planes. They represent in due order what are commonly called the three persons of the Trinity. It will be seen that from each of them an outpouring of life or force is projected into the planes below. The first of these in order is the straight line which descends from the third aspect. The 
second is that part of the large oval which lies on our left hand the stream which descends from the second aspect until it has touched the lowest point in matter, and then rises again up the side on our right hand until it reaches the lower mental level. It will be noted that in both of these outpourings the divine light becomes darker and more veiled as it descends into matter, until at the lowest point we might almost fail to recognize it as divine life at all, but as it rises again when it has passed its nadir it shows itself somewhat more clearly. The third outpouring which descends from the highest aspect of the lobos differs from the others in that it is in no way clouded by the matter through which it passes, but retains its virgin purity and splendor untarnished. It will be noted that this outpouring descends only to the level of the Buddhic plane, the fourth plane, and that the link between the two is formed by a triangle in a circle, representing the individual soul of man the reincarnating ego. Here the triangle is contributed by the third outpouring and the circle by the second, the Christian creed, by C. W. Leadbeater, pp. 39, 43, 43 ACS, D, I, 98, 99, 100, 103. 1. The root of life was in every drop of the ocean of immortality. Every atom and matter was impregnated with the life of the Logos. 96 ATRE MICFIRE. In dealing with the second group, the human form transmits the emanative radiations to a much higher grade of Diva. These Devas are of a more pronounced hue, and after due assimilation of the human radiation, they transmit it principally to the animal kingdom, thus demonstrating the close relationship between the two. second logos, solar fire, the sun aspect, consciousness, motion, the essence of the third logos, fire by friction, matter, the macrocosm, first logos, second logos, heat, third logos, the sun, it is Mercury, Saturn, the microcosm, the monad, Fire, motion, electric fire, solar fire, the personality fire by friction, the mental body lure power, the astral body love wisdom, the physical body, physical body, the brain, the heart, lower organs, active intelligence, monad, ego, personality, the will to live or to be, electric, duality, our love between two, solar, the fire of mind, the relation between fire by friction, this is the subjective expression, inner power, love and wisdom, activity or intelligence, this is the objective expression, will or power, Love and wisdom, activity or intelligence, this is the subjective expression. Fire, heat, motion, this is the objective expression. Will or power, electric fire, love wisdom, solar fire, active intelligence. T H E T H E R I C V O D Y A N E R A N A. 
emitted and radiated, fire vivifying, stimulating, and destroying, fire transmitted, reflected, and absorbed, fire, the basis of all life, fire, the essence of all existence, fire, the means of development, and the impulse behind all evolutionary process, fire, the builder, the preserver and the constructor, fire, the originator, the process and the goal, fire, the purifier and the consumer. The God of fire and the fire of God interacting upon each other, until all fires blend and blaze until all that exists is passed through the fire from a solar system to an ant and emerges as a triple perfection. Fire then passes out from the ring past on this perfected essence, whether essence emerging from the human ring past not, the planetary ring past not or the solar. The wheel of fire turns and all within that wheel is subjected to the threefold plane, and eventually stands perfected. The function of the etheric body. We will now continue with the discussion of the etheric body, and take up the consideration of its function and its relation to the physical body. The two may wisely be considered together, for the interrelation is so close that it is not possible to discuss them separately. Primarily the functions of the etheric body are three in number. 1. It is the receiver of prana. 2. It is the assimilator of prana. 3. It is the transmitter of prana. 1. The receiver of prana. The etheric body may therefore be described as negative or receptive in respect to the rays of the sun, and as 98-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E -E -E -E. Positive and expulsive in respect to the dense physical body. The second function that of assimilation is strictly balanced or internal. As stated earlier, the pranic emanations of the sun are absorbed by the etheric body. He is certain centers which are found principally in the upper part of the body, from whence they are directed downwards to the center which is called the etheric spleen, as it is the counterpart in etheric matter of that organ. The main center for the reception of prana at present is a center between the shoulder blades. Another has been allowed to become partially dormant in man through the abuses of so-called civilization, and is situated slightly above the solar plexus. In the coming will trace, and increasingly in this, the necessity for the exposure of these two centers to the rays of the sun, will be appreciated with a corresponding improvement in physical vitality and adaptability. These three centers, 1. Between the shoulder blades, 2. About the diaphragm, 3. And the spleen, make, if one could but see it, a radiant etheric triangle, which triangle is the originating impulse for the later pranic circulation throughout the entire system. The etheric body is really a network of fine channels, which are the component parts of one interlacing fine core, one portion of this core being the magnetic link which unites the physical and the astral bodies and which is snapped or broken after the withdrawal of the etheric body from the dense physical body at the time of death. The silver core is loosed, as the Bible expresses it, 44 and this is the basis of the legend of the faithful sister who cuts the thread of life with the dreaded shears the etheric web is composed of the intricate weaving of this vitalis cord, and apart from the seven centers. 44 the Bible, ECC, 12, 6. T-H-E-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-B-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-99 Within the web which corresponds to the 
sacred centers, and of which the Sameen is frequently counted as one, it has the two above mentioned, which make with the screen a triangle of activity. The etheric web of the solar system is of an analogous nature, and likewise has its three receptive centers for cosmic prana. The mysterious band in the heavens, which we call the Milky Way, S. 2.250 is closely connected with cosmic prana, for the cosmic vitality or nourishment which vitalizes the solar etheric system. 2. The assimilator of prana. The process of assimilation is carried on in this triangle, and the prana which enters into either center circulates three times around the triangle before being transmitted to all parts of the etheric vehicle and presents to the dense physical body. The main organ of assimilation is the spleen, the etheric center and the dense physical organ. The vital essence from the sun is passed into the etheric spleen, and is thus subjected to a process of intensification or devitalization, according to the condition, healthy or not, of that organ. If the man is in a healthy state the emanation received will be augmented by his own individual vibration, and its rate of vibration will be heated up before it is passed on into the physical screen, or it will be slowed down and lowered if the man is in a poor condition of health. These three centers are in the form that all centers take, of saucer-like impressions, resembling somewhat the appearance of small whirlpools, and which draw within their sphere of influence the currents that come their way. The centers should be pictured as whirling vortices with a closely woven threefold channel passing from each center to the other, and forming an almost separate circulatory system. This finds its point of departure for 180 REATISEOF Cosmic Fire. The entire system at the further side of the spleen to that of which the prana entered. The vital fluid circulates through and between these three centers three times, before it finally passes out from them to the periphery of its little system. This final circulation carries the prana, via the fine interlacing channels, to every part of the body, which becomes entirely impregnated by these emanations, if it might be so expressed. These emanations find their, their way finally out of the etheric system by means of surface radiation. The essence escapes from the circumference of its temporary ring pass not as emanating from the prana, which is the same prana as earlier. Received, plus the peculiar quality that any single individual may convey to it during its transitory circulation. The essence escapes, plus individual quality. Here again can be seen the correspondence to the escape of all essences from the remaining ring past not when the cycle has been completed. This matter of the etheric body is of a very practical interest, and when its importance is better realized, men will attend to the distribution of prana within the body with closer attention, and will see that the vitalization of the body, via the three centers, proceeds unhindered. The subject has necessarily to be handled in a superficial manner, and only outlines and scattered hints can be given. Nevertheless, it will be found that if this teaching is studied with care, it will convey a knowledge of truths whose caliber and content is proven valuable and of a kind hitherto not given out. The place of the etheric sheath is a separator or ring pass knot, and its functions as a receiver and distributor of prana are dealt with here in a larger sense than heretofore, and the subject may later be enlarged. Two fundamental truths.
stand out from the aggregate of facts so slightly dealt with here. The etheric body and prana 101. A. B. C. First, the fourth etheric subplane of the physical plane is the immediate concern of Next, the microcosm, the heavenly man, the planetary logos, the grand man of the heavens, and the solar logos. Second, in this fourth chain and fourth round, the fourth number is beginning to be studied, and viewed as a separating web it permits occasional exit to those of suitable vibration. 3. The Transmitter of Prana We have touched but little on the subject of the fire, the purpose of the etheric body being to convey it and distribute it to all parts of its system. We have built on facts which might stimulate interest and emphasize the utility of this frantic field. Certain facts need emphasis and consideration as we study this static ring and its circulating fires. Let me briefly recapitulate for the sake of clarity. The system receives prana from cosmic sources via three centers, and redistributes it to all parts of its extended influence, or to the bounds of the solar etheric web. This cosmic prana becomes colored by solar quality and reaches the furthest confines of the system. Its mission might be described as the vitalization of the vehicle which is the physical material expression of the solar logos. The planet receives prana from the solar center, and redistributes it via the three receiving centers to all parts of its sphere of influence. This solar prana becomes colored by the planetary quality and is absorbed by all evolutions found within the planetary ring Kasnan. Its mission might be described as the vitalization of the vehicle which is the physical material expression of one or other of the seven heavenly men. 102 ATREATISE on Cosmic Fire. The microcosm receives prana from the sun after it has permeated the planetary etheric vehicle, so that it is solar prana, plus planetary quality. Each planet is the embodiment of some one ray aspect, and its quality is marked predominantly on all its evolution. Therefore, which is active radiator heat? Heat varies in vibration and quality according to the receiving entity. Man passes the prana through his etheric vehicle, colors it with his own peculiar quality, and so transmits it to the lesser lives that make up his little system. Thus, the great interaction goes on, and all parts blend, merge and are interdependent, and all parts receive, color, qualify and transmit. An endless circulation goes on that has neither a conceivable beginning nor possible end from the point of view of finite man, for its source and end are hidden the unknown cosmic bound. Were conditions everywhere perfected this circulation would proceed unimpeded and might result in a condition of almost endless duration, but limitation and termination result as the effects of imperfection giving place to a gradual perfection. Every cycle originates from another cycle of irrelative completeness, and will give place over to a higher spiral thus eventuate periods of apparent relative perfection leading to those which are still greater. The aim for this greater cycle is the blending, as we know, of the two fires of matter, latent and active, and their merging with the fires of mind and spirit till they are lost from 
insight in the general flame. The fires of mind and spirit burn of matter and thereby bring about liberation from the confining vehicles. The altar of earth is the birthplace of spirit, its liberator from the mother matter, and its entrance into higher realms. Hence, when the pranic vehicle is working perfectly in all three groups, human, planetary, and solar, the union with latent fire will be accomplished. Here lies T-H-E-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-D-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-103. The reason for the emphasis laid on the necessity for building here, refined physical vehicles. The more refined and rarefied the form, the better a receiver of prana will it be, and the less will be the resistance found to the uprising of Kundalini at the appointed time. Coarse matter and crude immature physical bodies are a menace to the occultist, and no true seer will be found with a body of a gross quality. The dangers of disruption are too great, and the menace of disintegration by fire too awful. Once in the history of the race in Lemurian days this was seen in the destruction of the race in the continents by means of fire.45 The guides of the race at that time availed themselves of just this very thing to bring about the finish of an inadequate form. The latent fire of matter is seen in volcanic display, for instance, in the radiatory fire of the system were combined. The planetary kundalini and solar emanation rushed into conjunction, and the work of destruction was accomplished. The same thing may again be seen, only in matter of the second ether, and the effects therefore will be less severe owing to the rarity of this ether and the comparatively greater refinement of the vehicles. When I here note a fact of interest, though of a mystery insoluble as it is to most of us, and that is, that these destructions by fire are part of the test by fire of an initiation of that one of the heavenly men whose karma is bound up with our earth. Each destruction of a portion of the web results in a greater facility of exit, and is in reality, when seen from the higher plane, a step forward and an expansion. A repetition of this takes place likewise in the system at the stated cycles. 45 in the Secret Doctrine, Volume I, page 473, footnote, the destruction of Lemuria by fire is hinted at, and in the Secret Doctrine, 2, 149, footnote, the words of her, Lemuria was not submerged but was destroyed by volcanic action, and afterwards sank. Four, disorders of the etheric body. 104. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E on cosmic fire. We will now study the etheric body, and its ills and also its after-death condition. This matter can be only briefly touched upon. All that may now be indicated is a general idea of the fundamental ailments to which the etheric may be subject, and the trend which applied medicine may later take when occult laws are better understood. One fact must here be brought out a fact but little comprehended or even apprehended. This is the significant fact that the ills of the etheric vehicle, in the case of the microcosm, will be found likewise in the macrocosm. Herein lies the knowledge that oft times explains the apparent miseries of nature. Some of the great world ills have their source in etheric ills, extending the idea of the etheric to planetary conditions and even to solar. As we touch upon the causes of etheric distress in man, their planetary and solar correspondences and reactions may perhaps be realized. 
You will need to bear carefully in mind when studying this matter, that all the diseases of the etheric body will appertain to its useful purpose and be either. by affecting its apprehension of prana, organic, and thereby affecting its distribution of prana, static, and thereby affecting the wet, when viewed solely from the angle of providing a physical ring pass knot, and acting as a separator between the physical and the astral. These three different groups of functions or purposes of each of paramount interest, lead to totally different results, and react in a different manner both outwardly and inwardly. Viewed from the planetary standpoint the same conditions will be perceived, and the etheric planetary body T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-D-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-105 Which is fundamentally the body in the case of the sacred planets, of which the Earth is not one, will have its functional disorders, which will affect its reception of prana, will suffer its organic troubles which may affect its distribution, and those disorders which permit its trouble in the etheric web, which forms the ring pass not for the involved planetary spirit. Here I will point out that in the case of the planetary spirits who are on the divine evolutionary arc, the heavenly men whose bodies are planets, the etheric web does not form a barrier, but like the karmic lords on the higher plane they have freedom of movement outside the bounds of the planetary web. Within the circumference of the solar ring pass 9.46, Systemic standpoint, these same effects may be observed, functionally, this time in connection with the cosmic center, organically, in connection with the sum total of the planetary systems, and statically, in connection with the solar or logoic ring pass knot. Who am I now, for purposes of clarity? Take up these three groups separately and briefly touch upon them and hint, but more will not be possible, at methods of cure and of adjustment. A. Microcosmic functional disorders. These have to do with the reception by man, via the necessary centers, of the pranic fluids. We must always bear in mind, and thus keep the distinction clear, that these emanations of prana have to do with the heat latent in matter, when received and functioning through the etheric body correctly, they will operate with the natural latent bodily. 46 The planetary spirit is another term for the logos of our planet, one of the seven spirits before the throne, and therefore one of the seven heavenly men. He is on the evolutionary arc of the universe, and has passed the stages beyond the human. The planetary entity is on the evolutionary and is a very low grade entity. He is the sum total of all the elemental lines of the planet. 106. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-R-Cosmic 5
which in so many is out of after the line of its position in the back is apt to be misplaced. The splenic center near the diaphragm is subnormal in size and its vibration is not correct. In the case of the aboriginal dwellers in such localities as the South Seas,
molecules. The brain tissue may be literally destroyed by this pressure, and serious trouble be caused through the etheric brain pass not having been destroyed in some one place.
subjected to seven interpretations. Thank you.
build quaternary, which is synthesized eventually into a good ray, the third major ray of active intelligence or adaptability. The names of the rays are as follows. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-D-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-113 For in their totality the quaternary of manas while in process of evolution, and who pass under their influence all the sons of men. Fifth of the four planes of buddy, or the plane of spiritual intuition, manas, or the mental plane, desire, and the physical, who are likewise allied to the human evolution in a CIOSER sense than the higher three. After their interesting correspondence is found in the following facts that are even now in the process of development. The fourth plane of buddy is the one on which the planetary lawboy begin to make their escape from their planetary ring as not, or from the etheric web that has its counterpart on all the planes. When man begins in a small sense to coordinate the Buddhic vehicle or, to express it otherwise, when he has developed the power to contact ever so slightly the Buddhic plane, begins simultaneously and consciously to achieve the ability to escape from the etheric web on the physical plane. Later he escapes from its correspondence on the astral plane, and finally from the correspondence on the fourth subplane of the mental plane this time via the mental unit. This leads eventually to causal functioning, or to the ability to dwell, and to be active in, of the ego, who is the embodiment of the love and wisdom aspect of the monad. Note here the correspondence to that proof fact, that many can even now escape from the etheric body, and function in there. The three major rays. 1. The ray of will or power. 2. The ray of love or wisdom. 3. The ray of active intelligence. The four minor rays. 4. The ray of beauty, harmony, art or rhythm. 5. The ray of concrete knowledge or science. 6. The ray of abstract idealism. 7. The ray of ceremonial order or organization. 114. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E -E on cosmic fire. Astral sheet, which is the personality reflection of that same second aspect. When a man takes the fourth initiation, he functions in the fourth plane vehicle, the Buddhic, and has escaped permanently from the personality ring past not, on the fourth subplane of the mental. There is not to hold him to the three worlds. In the first initiation he escapes from the green past not in a more temporary sense, but he has yet to escape from the three higher mental levels, which are the mental correspondences to the higher leaders, and to develop their consciousness on these three higher subplanes. We have here a correspondence to the work to be done by the initiate after he has achieved the fourth solar plane, the Buddhic. There yet remains the development of full consciousness on the three higher planes of spirit before he can escape from the solar ring past on, which is achieved at the seventh initiation, taken somewhere in the system, or in its cosmic. The correspondence reached by the cosmic Sukhatma, or cosmic thread of light point 5L. This fourth earth chain is in this connection one of the most important, for it is the appointed place for the domination of the etheric body by the human monad, with the aim in view of both human and planetary escape from limitations. This earth chain, though not one of the seven sacred planetary chains, is of vital importance at this time to the planetary logos, 
who temporarily employs it as a medium of incarnation and of expression. This fourth round finds the solution of its strenuous and chaotic life in the very simple fact of the shattering of 51 Sutratma. The silver thread, which incarnates from the beginning of a period of manifestation until the end, stringing upon itself the pearls of human existence. And it is the line of energy which connects the lower personal man with his father in heaven via the ego, the mediating middle principle. Upon it are found those focal points of energy we call the permanent atoms. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-B-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-E-115 The etheric web in order to affect liberation, and permit a later and more adequate form to be employed. After the chain of ideas may be followed up in the remembrance that the fourth ether is even now being studied and developed by the average scientist, and is already somewhat harnessed to the service of man, that the fourth subplane of the astral plane is the normal functioning ground of the average man and that in this round is faith from the etheric vehicle is being achieved, that the fourth subplane of the mental plane is the present goal and endeavor of one fourth of the human family, that the fourth man Bandera will see the solar ring pass not. Offering avenues of escape to those who have reached the necessary point, that the four planetary logoi will perfect their escape from their planetary environment, and will function with greater ease on the cosmic astral plane, paralleling on cosmic levels the achievement of the human units who are the cells in their bodies. Our solar logos, being the logos of the fourth order, will begin to coordinate his cosmic rooted body. And as he develops cosmic mind, he will gradually achieve, by the aid of that mind, the ability to touch the cosmic rooted plane. These possibilities and correspondences have been somewhat dwelt upon, as it is necessary for us to realize the work to be done in connection with the etheric web before we take up the matter of the various causes which may hinder the desired progress and prevent the appointed escape and destined liberation. Later we will take up the consideration of the etheric web and its static condition. This will entail the recollection of two things. First, that this static condition is only so when viewed from the standpoint of man at the present time. And is 116 a treatise on cosmosire. Only turned so in order to make plain of the changes that must be effected and the dangers that must be offset. Evolution moves so slowly from man's point of view that it seems to be almost stationary, especially where etheric evolution is concerned. Second, that we are only concerning ourselves with the physical etheric body and not with its correspondences on all planes. This is because our system is on the cosmic etheric level, and hence it is and systemic ethers. For the sake of those who read this treatise, and because the sequential repetition of facts makes for clarity, let us here briefly tabulate certain fundamental hypotheses that have a definite bearing upon the matter in hand, and which may serve to clear up the present existing confusion concerning the matter of the solar system. Stated are already well known, others are inferential, while some are the expression of old and true correspondences couched in a more modern form. A. The lowest cosmic plane is the cosmic physical, and it is the only one which the finite mind of man can in any way comprehend. B. 
is a point of transition from out of a lower into a higher, and is the transferring locality into a higher body. The fourth subplane of the monodic plane is in a very real sense the place of transition from off the ego of ray, whichever that ray may be, onto the monodic ray. These three major rays are organized on the three higher subplanes of the monodic plane in the same way that the three abstract subplanes of the mental or the group of transference from off the personality ray onto the egoic. The four lesser rays blend with the third major ray of active intelligence on the mental plane and on the atmic plane. The four Lagoi or planetary spirits work as one, on the atmic plane. I. Another synthesis takes place on the synthetic setting ray on the second subplane of the Buddha plane and the monodic plane, while the comparatively few monads of lower power are synthesized on the atomic subplane of the atmic. All three groups of monads work in triple form on the mental plane under the Mahachohan, the Manu, and the Bodhisattva, or the Christ. On the second or monodic plane they work as a unit, and they demonstrate. 128 TREATISE on Cosmic Fire. In their dual work on the Atmic Plane, and their essential triplicity on the Buddhist plane. Point five five. The fourth of their plane holds the key to the dominance of matter, and it might be noted that on the fourth physical ether, man begins to coordinate his astral, or emotional body, and to escape at ever more frequent intervals into that vehicle. Continuity of consciousness is achieved when a man. Man begins to control his causal or ego body, and to polarize his consciousness therein until the polarization is complete. He functions then consciously on it when he has mastered the correspondences to the ethers on the mental plane. On the Buddhic plane, the fourth cosmic ether, the heavenly men, or the group consciousness of the human and diva monads begin to function, and to escape eventually from the cosmic etheric planes. When these three cosmic ethers are mastered, the functioning is protected, polarization is centered in the monotic vehicles, and the seven heavenly men have achieved their goals. J. On these etheric levels, therefore, the logos of R. 55 The monads of the fourth creative hierarchy, the human monads, exist in three main groups. A. The monads of will. B. The monads of love. Circa. The monads of activity. Mahatman. The officer in our planetary hierarchy who presides over the activities carried on in the four minor rays in their synthesizing third ray. He has to do with civilization with the intellectual culture of the races, and with intelligent energy. He is the head of all the adepts. Bodhisattva. The exponent of second ray force, the teacher of the adepts of men and of angels. This office was originally held by the Buddha, but his place was taken after his illumination by the Christ. The work of the Bodhisattva is with the religions of the world, and with the spiritual essence in man. The Manu, the one who presides over the evolution of the races. He is the ideal man. He has to work with the forms through which spirit is to manifest. He destroys and builds up again. These three individuals preside over the three departments into which the hierarchy is divided, and therefore represent in their 
particular sphere the three aspects of divine manifestation. The system repeats, as a grand totality, the experiences of his tiny reflections on the physical planes. He coordinates his cosmic astral body, and attains continuity of consciousness when he has mastered the three cosmic ethers. Okay. It is to be observed that just as in man the dense physical body in its three grades dense, liquid and gaseous is not recognized as a principle, so in the cosmic sense the physical dense astral liquid and mental gaseous levels are likewise regarded as non-existent, and the solar system has its location on the fourth ether. The seven sacred planets are composed of matter of this fourth ether, the seven heavenly men, whose bodies they are, function normally on the fourth plane of the system, the Buddhic or the fourth cosmic ether. When man has attained the consciousness of the Buddhic plane, he has raised his consciousness to that of the heavenly man in whose body he is a cell. This is achieved in the fourth initiation, the liberating initiation. At the fifth initiation he ascends with the heavenly man onto the fifth plane, from the human standpoint, the atmic. And at the sixth he has dominated the second cosmic ether and has monodic consciousness and continuity of function. At the seventh initiation he dominates the entire sphere of matter contained in the lowest cosmic plane, escapes from all etheric contact, and functions on the cosmic astral plane. The past solar system saw the surmounting of the three lowest cosmic physical planes viewed from the matter standpoint and the coordination of the dense three physical form in which all life is found dense matter, liquid matter, gaseous matter. A correspondence may be seen here in the work achieved in the first three. Root races 0.5657. 56 root race. The secret doctrine teaches us that in this evolution around on this planet the jivat of the human soul passes through seven main types or root races. Gives birth to the 
succeeding race, the two will overlap in time, existing for many ages. Of existing peoples the Tartars, Chinese and Mongolians belong to the fourth race, the Australian Aborigines and Hottentots to the third. 57 in the coordination of the monotic, ethnic and wounded vehicles of the heavenly man, the vehicles of spiritual life, the higher esoteric correspondence to the prana plane, the lower reflection, the etheric physical body, the point of synthesis is always on the atomic subplane, and the six merge and become the seventh. In this solar system the plane of synthesis is not included in the evolutionary scheme. It is the plane of gathering in and of Pralaya. In the earlier system the fourth of Earth was in this position. It was to the evolving units of that period where the atomic plane is now, the highest point of achievement. The goal for all is the lunar plane or the fourth cosmic ether. Three other planes are the goal now, the Buddhist, Agnes and Monotic, each time three planes and their eventual synthesis. In the future solar system the cosmic physical atomic ether, the plane of Ani in the system now, will be the starting point of the three planes to be dominated. Will be the three lowest cosmic astral planes. Man starts and where he leaves off with cosmic physical matter perfected. His lowest body, therefore, will be the monotic or the body of the second cosmic ether. This will not be then counted as a principle any more than the threefold lower physical body of the present day man is recognized as a principle. The present solar system will see the surmounting of the three next cosmic physical planes, the fourth, third, and the second ethers, and the coordination of the cosmic etheric body. T-H-E-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-D-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-123 Solar radiations are received, and circulated three times around the triangle, this being distributed to the periphery of the body, animating and vitalizing all the physical organs and conducive to the automatic subconscious workings of the body of dense matter. When perfectly accomplishing its object it protects from disease, and the ills of the flesh are unknown to the man who absorbs and distributes prana with accuracy. This hint is recommended to all physicians, and when properly comprehended, will result in a basic change in medicine, from a curative to a preventive foundation. The second stage is that in which the pranic fluids begin to blend with the fire at the base of the spine and to drive that fire slowly upwards, transferring its heat from the centers below the solar plexus to the three higher centers that of the heart, the throat and the head. This is a long and slow process that left to the unaided force of nature, but it is just here that the a quickening of the process is permitted in order to equip workers in the field of human service. This is the object of all occult training. This angle of the matter we will take up in still greater detail when we handle our next point of Kundalini and the spine. The third stage is that in which active radiatory matter or prana is blended ever more perfectly with the fire-laden in matter. This results, as will be brought out later, in certain effects. It produces a quickening of the normal vibration of the physical body so that it responds with more readiness to the higher note of the ego, and causes a steady rising of the blending fires through the threefold channel in the spinal column. In the second stage this vitalizing blended fire reaches a center between the lower part of the shoulder blades, which is the point of conjunction, and of complete merging, of the fire from the base of the 
flash of spirit, and the uprising of the inner fires of matter, controlled and directed by the conscious action of the fire of mind, produce corresponding results on the same levels on the astral and mental planes, so that a paralleling contact is brought about, and the great work of liberation proceeds in an ordered manner. First initiation sequence results perfected. 126. ATREATISE on cosmic fire. And lead to the fourth, where the intensity of the united fires results in the complete burning away of all barriers, and the liberation of the spirit by conscious directed effort from the threefold lower consciously to bring about his own liberation. These results are self-induced by the man himself, as he is emancipated from the three worlds, and has broken the rule of rebirth himself instead of being broken upon it. It will be apparent from this elucidation that the exceeding importance of the etheric vehicle as separator of the fires has been brought forward, and consequently we have brought to our notice the dangers that must ensue should men tamper injudiciously, ignorantly or willfully with these fires. Should a man, by the power of will, through an overdevelopment of the mental side of his character, acquire the power to blend these fires of matter and to drive them forward, he stands in danger of obsession, insanity, physical death, or a dire disease in some part of his body, and he also runs the risk of an over. Development of the sex impulse through the driving of the force in an uneven manner upwards, or enforcing its radiation to undesirable centers. The reason of this is that the matter of his body is not pure enough to stand the united of the flames, that the channel of the spine is still clogged and blocked, and therefore acts as a barrier. flame backwards and downwards, and that the flame being united by the power of mind and not being accompanied by a simultaneous downflow from the plane of spirit permits the entrance, through the burning etheric, of undesirable and extraneous forces, currents, and even entities. These wreck and tear and ruin. What is left of the etheric vehicle? of the brain tissue and even of the dense physical body itself. The unwary man, being unaware of his ray and therefore of the proper geometrical form of triangle it is. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-D-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-127 the correct method of circulation from center to center will drive the fire in unlawful progression and thus burn up tissue. This will result then, if in nothing worse, in a setting back for several lives of the clock of his progress, for he will have to spend much time in rebuilding where he destroyed, and with recapitulating on right lines all the work to be done. life to life in this line of action, if he neglects his spiritual development and concentrates on intellectual effort due to the manipulation of matter for selfish ends, if he continues this in spite of the promptings of his inner self, and in spite of the warnings that may reach him from those who watch, and if this is carried on for a long period he may bring upon himself a destruction that is final for this man Vantara cycle. He may, by the uniting of the two fires of matter and the dual expression of mental fire, succeed in the complete destruction of the physical permanent atom, and thereby sever his connection with the higher self for eons of time. H. E. B. Has somewhat touched on this when speaking of lost souls. 5859.
1999 we must here emphasize the reality of this dire disaster and sound a warning note to those who approach the subject of the fires of matter with all its hidden dangers. The blending of these fires must be the result of spiritualized knowledge, and must be directed solely by the light of the spirit, who works through love and is love. This unification and this utter merging not from the point of view of sense or of material gratification, but because liberation and purification is desired in order that a higher union with the logos may be evolved. This union must be desired, not for selfish ends, but because group perfection is the goal and scope for greater service to the race must be achieved. 58 Lost Souls Isis Unveiled, Volume 2, page 368, also S, D, I, 255, and S, D, 3, 493, 513 to 516, 521, 525, 527, 59 CS, D, 523 to 529 for verification by science, or even to point the way to the next step onward for scientific investigators, and we may do so as but incidental and purely secondary. What we seek mainly is to give indications of the development and correspondence of the threefold hole that makes the solar system what it iced vehicle through which a great cosmic entity, the solar logos, manifests active intelligence with the purpose and need of demonstrating perfectly the love side of his nature. Back of this design lies a yet more esoteric and ulterior purpose hidden the whole consciousness of the Supreme Being, which perforce will be later demonstrated when the present objective is attained. The dual alternation of objective manifestation and of subjective obscuration, the periodic outbreathing, followed by the inbreathing of all that has been carried forward through evolution of bodies in the system one of the basic cosmic vibrations, and the
science of calculation. The physiology of their economy of a man, a planet, and a system is brought about by the following causes. A. The cessation of desire. This should be the result of all evolutionary process. Death, under the law, is brought about by the attainment of the objective, and hence by the cessation of aspiration. This, as the perfected cycle draws to its close, will be true of the individual human being, of the heavenly man, and of the logos himself. By the slowing down and gradual cessation of the cyclic rhythm, the adequate vibration is achieved, and the work accomplished. When the vibration or note is physically felt or sounded it causes, at the point of synthesis with other vibrations, the utter shattering of the forms. Motion is characterized, as we know, by three qualities. One, inertia. the above sequence and presuppose a period of slow activity, succeeded by one of extreme movement. This middle period produces incidentally, as the true note and rate is sought in cycles of chaos, of experiment, of experience and of comprehension. Following on these two degrees of motion, which are characteristic of the atom, man, of the heavenly man, 130 For a group, and the logos of the totality comes a period of rhythm and of stabilization where a point of balance is achieved. By the force of balancing the pairs of opposites, and thus producing equilibrium, Kalaya is the inevitable sequence. By the severing of the physical from the subtler body on the inner planes, and through the shattering of the web. This has a threefold effect. First, the life that had animated the physical form, both dense and etheric, and which had its starting point in the permanent atom and from then, pervaded the moving and the unmoving, God, the heavenly man, and the human being as well as in the atom of matter, is withdrawn entirely within the atom upon the plane of abstraction. This, plane of abstraction, is a different one for the entities involved. A, B, C, D. For the physical permanent atom, it is the atomic level. For man, it is the causal vehicle. For the heavenly man, it is the second plane of monotic life, his habitat. For the logos, it is the plane of mind. All these mark the points for the disappearance of the unit into Perlaya. We need here to remember that it is always Perlaya when viewed from below. From the higher vision, that sees the subtler continuously overshadowing the dense when not an objective manifestation. Perlaya is simply subjectivity, and is not that, which is not, but simply that which is esoteric. Second, the etheric double of a man, a planetary logos, and a solar logos, being shattered, becomes non-polarized as regards its indweller, and permits therefore of escape. It is to word it otherwise no longer a source of attraction, nor a focal magnetic point. It becomes non-magnetic, and the great law of attraction ceases to. T-H-E-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-B-O-D-Y-A-N-D-P-R-A-N-A-131 Control it. Hence disintegration is the ensuing condition of the form. The ego ceases to be attracted by its form on the physical plane, and, proceeding to in-breath, withdraws its life from out of the sheath. 
the cycle draws to a close, the experiment has been made, the objective a relative one from life to life and from incarnation to incarnation has been achieved, and there remains nothing more to desire, the ego, or the thinking entity, loses interest therefore in the form, and turns his attention inward. His polarization changes, and the physical is eventually dropped. The planetary logo is likewise in his greater cycle, the synthesis or the aggregate of the tiny cycles of the cells of his body pursues the same course. He ceases to be attracted downward or outward, and turns his gaze within. He gathers inward the aggregate of the smaller lives within his body. The planet severs connection. Outer attraction ceases and all gravitates towards the center instead of scattering to the periphery of his body. In the system, the same process is followed by the solar logos. From his high place of abstraction, he ceases to be attracted by his body of manifestation. He withdraws his interest in the two pairs of opposites, the spirit and the matter of the vehicle, dissociate. With this dissociation the solar system, that, son of necessity, or of desire, ceases to be, and passes out of objective existence. Third, this leads finally, to the scattering of the atoms of the etheric body into their primordial condition. The subjective life, the synthesis of will and love taking active form, is withdrawn. The partner that is dissolved. The form then breaks up. The magnetism that has held it in coherent shape is no longer present, and dissipation is complete. Matter persists, but the form no longer persists. The work of the second logos ends, and the divine. 132-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E Incarnation of the Sun is concluded. But the faculty or inherent quality of matter also persists, and at the end of each period of manifestation, matter though distributed again into its primal form, is active intelligent matter plus the gain of objectivity, and the increased radiatory and latent activity which it has gained through experience. Let us illustrate. The matter of the solar system, when indifferentiated, was active intelligent matter, and that is all that can be predicated of it. This active intelligent matter was matter qualified by an earlier experience, and colored by an earlier incarnation. Now this matter is in form, the solar system is not in Goliath. Working out to those students whose karma permit.
permits and moves intuition suffices. E. By the withdrawal of the light, the form should gradually dissipate. The reflex action here is interesting to note, for the greater builders and devas who are that. T-H-E-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-T-O-B-Y-A-N-E-P-R-A-N-A-133 Active agents during manifestation Applying and circulating the pranic emanations, likewise lose their attraction to the matter of the form, and turn their attention elsewhere. On the path of outbreeding, whether human, planetary or local, these building devas on the same. Ray is the unit desiring manifestation, or on the complementary ray, attracted by his own desire, and perform their office of construction. On the path of inbreeding, whether human, planetary or logoic, they are no longer attracted, and the form begins to dissipate. They withdraw their interest in the forces likewise entities.
copyright removed 1981 by Loses Trust. Copyright copyright 1998 Loses Trust. One. The treatise on the seven rays. Four. Esoteric healing. Introductory remarks. The entire subject of healing is as old as the ages themselves been the subject of investigation and experiment. But as to the right use of the healing faculty and forces, the knowledge is in its infancy. Only in this age and generation is it at last possible to impart the laws of magnetic healing, and to indicate the causes of those diseases, originating in the three inner bodies, which today devastate the human brain, cause endless suffering and pain, and usher man through the portal which leads to the world of bodiless existence. Only today is man at the point in the evolution of this consciousness where he can begin to realize the power of the subjective worlds, and the new and vast science of psychology is his response to this growing interest. on your part. When one enters the realm of healing, one enters a world of much esoteric knowledge, and of an infinity of conclusions, and one is faced with the relations of many minds, who, through the ages, have sought to heal and to help. The why and the wherefore of disease have been the subject of endless investigations and speculations, and much definite deduction has been made as to the cures of such complaints. There has been also much formulation of methods, of techniques, of formulae, of prescription, of varied manipulations and of theories. All these serve to fill the mind with many ideas, some correct, some erroneous, and this makes it most difficult for new ideas to enter and for the student to assimilate the hitherto unknown. Aspirants lose money by refusing to let go of that which the lower mind cherishes. When they do succeed in being entirely open-minded and are ready to accept the new theories and hypotheses, they discover that the old and dear not really lost, but only relegated to its rightful place in a larger scheme. All initiates of the ageless wisdom are necessarily healers, though all may not heal the physical body. The reason for this is that all souls who have achieved any measure of true liberation are transmitters of spiritual energy. This automatically affects some aspect of the mechanism which is used by the soul for contact. When I employ the word, mechanism, in these instructions to refer to different aspects of the instrument, the body or form nature, through which all souls seek manifestation. I refer, therefore, to 1. The dense physical body, which is the sum total of all the organisms which compose it, needs. Copyright Copyright 1998 Uses Trust. 2. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. Possess the varying functions which enable the soul to express itself on the physical or objective plane as part of a greater and more inclusive organism. The physical body is the response apparatus of the influence spiritual man and serves to put that spiritual entity on rapport with the response apparatus of the planetary logos, the life in which we live and move and have our being. 2. The etheric body, which has one main objective. This is to vitalize and energize the physical body and thus integrate it into the energy body of the earth and of the solar system. It is a web of energy streams, of lines of force and of light. It 
constitutes part of the vast network of energies which underlies all forms of greater small microcosmic or macrocosmic. Along these lines of energy the cosmic forces flow, as the blood flows through the veins and arteries. This constant, individual, human, planetary and solar, circulation of life forces through the etheric bodies of all forms is the basis of all manifest life, and the expression of the essential non-separateness of all life. body, sometimes called the emotional body, is the effect of the interplay of desire and of sentient response upon the self at the center, and the resultant effect, in that body, is experience of emotion and as pain and pleasure and the other pairs of opposites. In these two bodies, the etheric and astral bodies, 90% of the cause of the physical disease and troubles is to be found. The mental body, or that much of the chitter mind stuff which an individual human unit can use and impress, constitutes the fourth of the series of mechanisms at the disposal of the soul. At the same time let it not be forgotten that these four constitute one mechanism. 5% of all modern disease originates in this body or state of consciousness, and here I wish to enunciate the truth of the constant reiteration by certain spiritual viewers that the mind is the cause of all sickness is not as yet a fact. A million years hence, when the focus of human attention has shifted from the emotional nature to the mind, and when men are essentially mentalist today they are essentially emotional, then the causes of disease must be sought in the mind realm. They are today to be found, except in a few rare cases, in lack of vitality or in too much stimulation, and in the realm of feeling, of desires thwarted or overindulged, and in the moods, suppressions, or expressions of the deep-seated longings, irritations, secret delight and the many hidden impulses which emanate from the desire life of the subject. This urge to be into the past first of all built, and is building, the outer physical response apparatus, and is today forcing a mechanism that has been constructed essentially for physical ends, to serve more subjective purposes. This again produces trouble, and only when man realizes that within the outer physical sheath there exist other bodies which serve more subtle response purposes will we see the gradual readjustment and health of the physical body. With these more subtle sheets we shall later deal. Copyright Copyright 1998 versus Trust. 3. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4, Esoteric Healing You naturally ask here, what is the general plan which I shall seek to follow as I instruct you in the laws of healing, those laws which guide the initiates and must gradually supersede the more physical methods of the present art of healing. You naturally also seek to know what is the special technique which you, as healers, must learn to employ, both as regards yourselves and as regards those you seek to heal. I will briefly outline the teaching I shall endeavor to give and point out where you must lay the emphasis, as you commence the study of this subject. I shall endeavor first of all to touch upon the causes of disease, for the occult student must ever begin in the world of origins and not in the world of effects. In the second place, I shall elaborate the seven methods of healing which govern the work of restitution, as it is called in the occult terminology as practiced by the initiates of the world. These determine the techniques which must be employed. You will note that these methods and techniques are conditioned by the rays, of which I have written elsewhere, asterisk, and that therefore the healer has to take into consideration not only his own ray but also the ray of the patient. There are therefore seven ray techniques, and these require elucidation.
condition before they can be applied intelligently. In the third place, I shall lay emphasis upon psychological healing and upon the need to deal with the patient in his inner life, for the basic law underlying all of the healing may be stated to be as follows. Lie. All disease is the result of inhibited soul life, and that is true of all forms in all kingdoms. The art of the healer consists in releasing the soul, so that its life can flow through the aggregate of organisms which constitute any particular form. It is interesting to note that the attempt of the scientist to release the energy of the atoms of the same general nature is the work of the esotericist when he endeavors to release the energy of the soul. In this release the nature of the true art of healing is hidden. Herein lies an occult hint. In the fourth place, we will consider the physical body, its diseases and ills, but only after we have studied that part of man which lies behind and surrounding the dense physical body. In that way we shall work from the world of inner causes to the world of outer happenings. We shall see that all that concerns the health of man originates from. 1. The cycle of forces, feelings, desires and occasional mental processes which characterizes the three separate bodies and determines the life and experience of the physical body. 2. The effect upon the physical body of the condition of humanity as a whole. A human being is. Copyright copyright 1998 loses trust. 4. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. An integral part of humanity, an organism and a greater organism. Conditions existing in the whole will be reflected in the human self, and many of the ills from which man suffers today will be effect upon him of conditions existing in the fourth kingdom and nature as a whole. For these he is not held responsible. 3. The effect upon his physical body of the planetary life, which is the expression of the life of the planetary logo, who is an evolving entity. The implications of this are largely beyond our ken, but the effects are discernible. I am not interested primarily in training individuals in order to make them more efficient healers. It is through healing at which I aim, and it is the work which is the formation which interests me at this time. But no group of people can work as a unit unless they love and serve each other. The healing energy of the spiritual hierarchy cannot flow through the group if there is disharmony and criticism. The first work, therefore, of any group of healers, is to establish themselves in love and to work towards group unity and understanding. I would like to point out here the need for patience as a healing group integrates and the auras of the group members blend. It takes a little time for people to learn to work together in perfect understanding and impersonality, and at the same time to achieve, during their work, a one-pointedness which will produce the needed group rhythm, a rhythm of such unity and intensity that the work can synchronize internally. Aspirants and students as they work along these lines must train themselves to think as a group, and to give to the group without a niggardly or reticent spirit the best that is in them, and also the fruit of their meditation upon these matters. I might also add that these instructions must be as concise as possible. I shall have to endeavor to put much truth and information into a brief space, so as to make each sentence convey some real idea and give some real light on the problems which confront the healing group. That which I have to say will fall into two parts. First, we will deal with the general work of healing and teaching, and this 
will involve the impartation by me of laws, of techniques and methods. Secondly, we will consider the healer and how he can perfect himself in the art of healing. Is it not true that the prime requisite of all healers is a sympathetic rapport with the patient, so that the healer achieves insight into the trouble and establishes the confidence?